In this video, we're going to show you how to allocate a, a contract to a subcontractor. So you got to allocate contracts. Then we say no inspections. And we uncheck these two checkboxes so that we only get unallocated. Now, the previous stage would have been completed and this stage hasn't been started because it hasn't got a contract. So first thing we have to do is allocate a contract. So let's say search. And then let's take um, something from lot number 11. We've got a roof there. So let's do completion on the same one. There. Lot number 11, completion. You'll see that it doesn't have a contract number, whereas roof and slab has a contract number. That means they've already been allocated. So let's allocate completion. We go to allocation. At the moment, these text boxes are showing information that you will need to do a search. But to do an allocation, you have to go to this allocated allocation button and then the checkboxes change. You'll see that the lot number and the, the structure is still selected. So we go and select the structure that we want to allocate and the header. And then we can select the contractor. Let's take the first one. Now you could have selected more than one. Yeah, you could have selected any number. Uh, let's go and allocate this. Okay, it's been allocated successfully. Now it's done. That lot number and that structure has been allocated to, let's go back to search. And let's say allocate it only to a search. And that's the only one that comes up. There it is. It's completion, beam filling, lot 11, and there's the contract number. We could delete this one now. Having selected allocate on, allocated only there, this button becomes enabled. You'll see it's not enabled if that's not selected because you can't delete something that hasn't been allocated. So let's say allocated only, and if we click this button, it will unallocate it and remove the contract so that you can, if you've made a mistake, you can allocate it to somebody else. Let's suppose now that they've done this uh, contract, then we can go to contractors um, and pay, uh, sorry, invoicing. Now let's say that they um, need to be paid and we want to see how much to pay this particular subcontractor. Let's do a search on that. So I've selected the subcontractor, I've selected the structure. I can select the header, but I'll, I'll leave it out because it, it's not too important. If, if you leave it out, it shows all the ones that fall under completion. I'll say show records w without inspections because at the moment, this one hasn't been inspected yet. Uh, normally, it would, you would only do this after it's been inspected by the engineer. Then I do a search and there it is. Now I can do um, an invoice for that. So I can say, uh, having selected it, I can say create invoice. Okay, it's been invoiced. Now that, that means it's actually created the invoice. Uh, let's say show invoice records, search, and there it is. And uh, now you'll see it also has an invoice number, invoice date. Okay. 
Now we could view that. We could say print or view invoices. Oh, so we'll see, yeah, that the progress payment number is nine. So we have to enter that number, yeah. And then we can say uh, print or view invoices. But before that, we have to select it and say, do retentions on selected. Now the record has been updated with retentions and it will show in the progress payment. Let's view and um, view or print. Put the nine in there. And there it is. So the price that it brings up is the price that you entered when you created the contract. The retentions is the percentage that you entered when you created the contract. And this is the amount. You'll see that there are others for this, for, for, for the other subcontractors. There's three that are no, sorry, there's only two. Now, there might be a whole lot for this person, in which case they'll all come up in the same table. This can then be printed and that's how much he gets paid. It, you can also delete um, an invoice. You can withdraw an invoice. If you check it and you, you withdraw it, you can do so unless it's been posted. If it's been posted, you can't change it anymore and that's to prevent fraud. So the way to post it is if, if, you've, if you're happy that you've done all the invoices and they're all correct, you check them or you can say check all when they appear here yeah? and then you say post invoices. I'm not going to push it now because I don't want to post this. I'm going to delete it. And if you post them, they can't change anymore. And then also the number of the progress payment will increment to number 10 for the next batch. And when you do searches, yeah, it will only bring up the, the, the one that hasn't been posted. Anything that's been posted is in the past and you can't change them. Anything that comes up here will be ones that have not been posted. And that's all, that's, that's all you have to do.